Hi, this is Rob from Intelligent Irrigation, LLC, and we're in North Hollywood today where we're doing the installation for Paul. Paul is from North Hollywood, and he's already got established gardens here, so we're going into three 4x4s, and we also have two spots for a garden, which is a 3x12 and another 3x12 that you see over there. And what we're going to do today is we're going to come off these valves right here, which is what we wanted to show you. So this is going to be a retrofit. As you can see, we got the galvanized piping coming in. And we're going to take off this section right here and come in with some PVC. And after we come in with some PVC, we're going to come down and we're going to put these hunter valves. And we're going to put three of them right along here. And of course, put the filter on the valves. And after we put the hunter valves on right there, we're going to run the PVC, as you see, through here. And then if you follow me here, we're going to come down here. And this is where we see our first bed right here. And this is where we're going to come in with our first bed is we're going to lay the PVC across here. We're coming with the dual aqua jet, one right here and one right here. And then as you see over to the right, where we have another bed, this will be our first bed we're coming in here, also the same way. And even though the bed's established, we got some room to put our trenches right in here. And as you can see, it's already got some nice, really nice, looks like Dr. Earth soil. And so we'll come in with the dual aqua jet right here. So we'll do these three beds here, one, two, three, and once again, they're already established, and we're going to improve the, the growth of them after we put it in. And then we're going to come over to this last one right here, as you see the trench, and where he's also going to grow some more greens. So, he's got a really nice setup here in the back, and we're going to hook up the aqua jet. And we're really looking forward to hooking up the aqua jet. And of course, we're going to hook up with the Green Knight dechlorinator. And so, this also would like to show you, is of course a lot of you have seen this packaging already. So you got the green knight, and with the green knight, what we're going to do is we're coming in with it hot. Okay, so we're going to make this right here before we hit the valves. So we're going to come in with the green knight. Water's going to be filtered through the green knight, and then it's going to go to all three valves. The reason we're doing it that way is so that the green knight filters every single bed. If we didn't do it that way, then we'd have to buy three different green knights to filter each zone. So we're going to filter before the valves, and that way it gets all the zones. It's going to be hot, but we're going to show you how we're going to do that. We're going to do it through a series of hose to pipe connections right here into our PVC. So once we get this hooked up, we're going to come back and show you exactly how we did it. But you'll see that's going to go right here with the three valves into PVC. So we'll be back later on in the installation to give you an update of where we're at, and hopefully this will help you to install on a retrofit where you come in to galvanize piping to PVC. So we'll be back with that segment in just a few minutes. Okay, so we're back again. We want to show you what we got so far, and it's turned out to be you know the really good setup. So what I want to do is I want to start right here because this is where we start. As you see, it's got some galvanized piping right here coming out of the house. Galvanized piping was used a lot when these houses were built. This is in North Hollywood. So a lot of the houses were built in the 30s and 40s and 50s out here with a lot of the same piping. That's why you see a lot of water mains breaking in Southern California for the old piping. A lot of it's 100 years old already. But anyway, the galvanized pipe, what happens is it gets rusty and corroded, which is the reason why you need these filters, the 150 meshes, to keep the stuff out, the crap that breaks off the pipe. And we got one to show you right here because it's a perfect example because it's not just this house, it's all the houses in Southern California that were built in this time period with the galvanized pipe. So this is the part that we took off and you can see right there, that's about 50% clogged. And what that is is buildup of rust and those chips will break off. So in your city water, where you do have the galvanized piping, this is the crap that's breaking off and coming through your line in little bits, and that's why you have to have the 150 mesh filter screen to keep, to keep out any of the uh, contaminants that may be in there, or, or actually the debris that will break off. But if you, if you have a house where you have galvanized piping and it's been in there since, oh, I don't know, 20, 30 years, it doesn't take long, this is what you're facing right here. So what we did is we took this off, and here's a galvanized pipe right here, and we came on with a threaded, this is a three-quarter thread to a three-quarter slip. And what that means, it has threads on one side and a slip is so you can put your PVC pipe in on the other. And we came in with a galvanized pipe and we didn't use Teflon tape. What we use is a grease because it's going into galvanized piping. 
So with the galvanized piping, it's best to use a uh, plumber's grease in there to make the seal so the water will seal and won't come out. I don't think Teflon tape is a very good seal when you come in to galvanize pipe. So we came into here so we can keep intact his, his watering so he can hook up his hose. So we came in here with our PVC and we put in a T. And this T right here is, is three quarter on this side and this side, but it has a thread down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in with the green knight. And what we're doing is, you'll see that we have three valves here. Now in order to dechlorinate all the beds, you either have two options. You buy three green knights, do it individually, or you put this on in the beginning. And let's face it, most of us are cost effective because, you know, gardening gets pretty expensive when you get into your amendments and your irrigation, your soil, your building of the beds. Before you know it, you have a big investment in there before you can get started growing. It's only after that that it pays off you know, over the years that you start getting a return on your investment. So your investment, you know, is pretty big in the beginning. And so we try and keep it cost effective. So we're going to use one of these before the valve. So we're going to hook it on right here, like so. And, and where we're doing it is, you see, we've got a fitting right here. This is a pipe to hose thread fitting because this is hose thread, right there's a hose thread, and your PVC is pipe thread. Okay, so what we did is we got a fitting, it's a brass fitting because you don't want to get plastic, they just don't last and they leak. So we got a brass fitting that is a pipe fit on one side and a hose on the other, so it's a hose to pipe coupler. So what we're going to do is we came in, we got a stub right here, we just have this cap on it come off. We're going to come down right here, and as you see we got it right there ready to go. So that's going to be the hookup right there. So the water is coming down through the dechlorinator before it hits any of the first valves. So then as it comes through here, you know, each valve, each zone, each time it comes on, the water for the beds is going to be dechlorinated by the Green Knight. And of course we're going with the rating of 35,000 gallons, even though we know that it's probably more like 60 to 70,000 gallons at these last. But when you got these quick connects on there, it's very easy to exchange because you just twist this off, you uh, twist it off on both sides, just remove it, and you can put your other one in. The only caution is it's under pressure all the time. It's PVC. It's got PVC glue with threads. So you want to keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't leak. I have mine under pressure. It's been that way for a year. I haven't had a problem. But still, no, the manufacturer wants you to put it on the other side of the valves where the water is not hot. And um, if you put it on this side, it may, um, may uh, uh, void the warranty because it's always hot. But I don't think you're going to have a problem. I don't have a problem with mine. So we're going to run it hot. As you see, we've got the boogie blue here. Also, um, that's a filter. Actually, it's about half the weight of the Green Knight, but this one right here is going to filter all of his hose water. So when he's ever watering with the hose, any plants or, or when he wants to make his amendments, he'll fill it up out of here so he'll have the dechlorinated water to uh, uh, put your amendments and your additives like your Vitazyme or your Bioblast or any other spray, foliar spray that you're going to use, you can fill it up with this because it's now dechlorinated. And as you can see, we have the extra hookups. So that's what we got set right here. Once again, we just took out from right here and plumbed in. And remember, you want to use a, a plumber's tape or, or actually a plumber's like putty, you know, to seal when you go from PVC to galvanized piping. So we've taken from galvanized to here. Now this is probably still clogged, but that's just the nature of the beast with galvanized piping. I mean, you know, in order to fix this, you would have to change all the piping under your house from the street forward, and that's just not feasible until it starts breaking. But anyhow, so we're going to take you from here and show you what we got so far of the layout. So we come in there, all the water is dechlorinated as it comes in here hot and, and fires up the valves. So this is your hunter valves with your anti-siphon valve on the other end, and as you see, each zone is filtered with your 150 mesh filter, and we'll be able to use a dual application of this by putting our 200 mesh powdered azomite in there and we can flush azomite through the bed during the season which is really cool. So we've come off the valves and as you see right here we left a little extra with a cap in case you want to bring on any zones for the future what you do is you, you have the ability now to just come in put in another T stub up and put any more zones in that you would like. Right here we have two feed pipes because we have two valves that's going to feed the three beds and the one against the wall and this valve right here is going to feed this bed along here. So what we're doing is we're coming off this way with two pipes, as you see. And as you come along here, you'll see the one that just shoots all the way over to the wall. And that's going to fire up that last bed. And then you see this one, it comes in as we teed off here. And we're running in the front of all three of the raised beds. So when we come over here, we'll show you in the beginning. It runs over here. 
And as you see, we put a T for each racetrack design, but at the end, you put an L because that's the end of the run. We came under the bed and then we stubbed up. And you see, he's got the trenches set, so now it's ready to cut the PVC and put the aqua jet in. So that's ready to go now, and we'll get ready with that. So these are the three beds that you see the one down there and the one right here. We got the valves in. Now we're going to start um, installing the aqua jet, a few other things. So we'll be back with that portion of the video in just okay, a minute. Okay, this is Rob, and we're back again. Okay, I want to show you what we did with this fit because we got everything all installed, all the beds installed and everything, and we want to show you what we did. And so we will recap what we showed you just a minute ago. Once again, we got the green night in here. So you got the water that comes up here, off galvanized into the green night, where it's dechlorinated, taking out between 85 and 95% of the chlorine and up to 50% of the chloramine. And then it comes down the hotline into each of the valves. And then the valves, as you see, are going to be wired to this controller right here so it's all going to be automated we're going to be watering twice a day for one minute each on each bed so what we'll do right now is we can activate these and show you how we're working and we'll start with this one right here as you see we got this bed against the wall and against the house we've got some peppers growing already and you'll see some bell peppers over there looking really good so we're going to fire this one up and show you how this one's working now as you see it's charging up and you'll hear it as it starts to power up and there it goes. You see it's boring the holes in there as it's cutting through the soil. Right there. And it's going to reach out, the water will capillate and spread. So all of these are going to be doing really good because once we cover this up, what's going to happen then is that everything's going to be oxygenated so you get the air into the roots and then the plants will just burst out and, and grow up because the oxygen and the root zone is a really good thing for the plants and beans that haven't had it. It, it perks them up, but it also excites some microlife in there. We've got some really good soil in here. We've got some azomite and some worm gold plus, so the aqua just going to do really good for that. So we're going to turn this one off and come over to our other three. Let's see if we can fire up the valves manually. But when you ever turn on valves manually, you do it by a screw back here. You don't do it by the solenoid because you'll burn the solenoid out. You do it by a screw. So we come back here to this little set screw right here. And we just activate that manually, we'll turn on the valve. So now the water is coming through here, coming through, being filtered, making sure that nothing gets in there. And then the water is coming out here into our four by four beds, and we have three of these. So as you can see, these are powering up now and filling up. And we're looking for some good things from this also. So we'll come with these three. And as you come down to the middle bed, so the plants are now getting watered, as you can hear it engaging as it's filling up. And then we've got the third one here that we just covered up. And so we're going to watch that, and now this bed is also getting watered. These plants will now flourish, and we're getting oxygenated. So these are the three 4x4 four four beds that we're going to be watering for two minutes a day. Once in the afternoon, and of course once in the evening time. So we're going to let these beds break in. What we're also going to do is, is we're going to come in with a sprayer over the top and we're going to um, spray the whole bed to kind of break it in a little quicker. But as you can see, the aqua jet boring the hole through here, right through there and coming in on the other side, I can already stick my finger in. Okay, so it's already reached out that far on this side and going a little farther. Same thing over here, right there. So you see it's reaching out now. This one. It's about that deep now. As you can see, I can stick my finger in there, and that's how deep that one goes. Same thing with that one there. So this one goes pretty deep, and we've only had it on for just a few minutes. So what's going to happen, the water's going to reach out, probably come to here, and then as it capillates and spreads. So we got one more to test, so we're going to turn that one off right now, and then we're going to test the last one against the wall. So we turn that off. Usually when you turn it off, it takes about 30 seconds for the water to actually shut off as you can hear it there. So now we're going to go with this last test against the bed, against the wall, which is another really nice setup. And that's over here. And as you see, we're going to add the soil. You feel the soil, you can hear it working. And you see as it's coming through here, cutting through there, cutting through there. And what we're going to do is we're going to put soil and fill it up to about here. 
these plants will be taken out. So this is a four inch level right here. We're gonna add the soil, and the soil will be right up to about here. And then as you can see, it's watering in the root zone. The water will then capillate and spread like it is here. So this one's working really good. As you can see, all the way out to the end. We've got a lot of power here. This bed's gonna get moisturized. We're gonna water the aeration so we can check everything in this bed to really slurry. So the apple jet looks really good over here. Our next time when we come out, we're gonna install some vertical devices right here for them. And of course, we'll be able to videotape that. We're gonna put some vertical devices right here and here. Vertical devices will go straight down to the bottom. It's gonna have three trunks spray like this. It's going to come out and cover this whole pot. And of course, we'll have that installation for you. We'll also have a follow up here. So, for North Hollywood and for Paul's house, we really enjoyed this installation. We want to thank Paul for inviting us out to do the installation for him. And we're going to come back with a follow up probably about a month, maybe a month and a half, to show you how everything flourished. So, until then, this is Rob from Intelligent Irrigation LLC reminding you to water the intelligent way with the oxygen.